surprised by the invitation. And uh, I was more surprised than when he told me that I will be talking in one week. So, But I cannot say no to Ravi. So I told Ravi, I cannot say no to Ravi. So, okay, I, I'll uh, talk uh, in a week. So, and I proposed to him not to talk uh, about homogenization. So <laughs> he is much happier with that. So I'll be talking about um, a chemical reaction network theory. It's also uh, one of the fields that I'm working on. So I started working on this field um, in 2015 because one of our professors, uh, he is one of my professors uh, way back my PhD. So he is uh, uh, a German, well, a uh, Filipino-German, uh, Professor Eduardo Mendoza. And uh, he, uh, I mean, he told us to join him in his uh, work on chemical reaction network theory. So this uh, work is uh, a joint work with Professor Mendoza and one of my colleagues here, uh, Dylan Antonio Talabis. So more specifically, I will be talking about complex balance equilibria of weakly reversible power law kinetic systems. So uh, kind of long, but uh, later I will explain everything. So this is the outline of my talk. So I will introduce what is this chemical reaction network theory So and chemical reaction networks, what make up uh, power law kinetic system. So, and then I will be talking about the preliminaries to our results uh, in four, in section four. And in five, I will talk about our main results about complex balance equilibria. Okay, so um, um, my department is, uh, well, kind, kind of strong in mathematical biology. So that's why, uh, oh, most of us uh, are working on uh, mathematical biology. So uh, the question we want to answer is uh, in complex biology and chemistry. So the question is, is it possible that knowing only the structure of the network will be sufficient to deduce behavior or behaviors of a system arising from the network that is independent of the rate parameters? So because, of course, if you have a dynamical system, the parameters are very hard to get. No? So, and that is the aim of CRNT or chemical reaction network theory. It is the aim is to analyze the properties of a dynamical system and in particular derived conditions, which ensure a dynamical behavior independent of the precise values of the reaction constants or parameters, which are
it looks like uh, Edita has some internet problem. Ravi? Yes. Uh, am I now? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. What you are audible then? now. Yes. Okay, okay. So I'm lost. Yeah, please share, share the oh, slide. And, yeah, please share the okay, slide. Okay. And, so what and, slide am I? Did I stop? And then the, 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 the third one. The third one? Yes. Could see the plan of the lecture, but after that I couldn't see anything. Ah, uh, back, back. Please go back. Please go back. Uh, okay, yes. so this is the slide. I'm so yes. sorry. Yes, this one, this one, this one. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. okay. So sorry. I hope. Yeah, no uh, all right. It's okay. So yeah. Please uh, it's night. Yes. It's yeah. It's night here, so <laughs> I think yeah, it's the problem. All right. So yeah, I will be talking about uh, this outline. So first, I will introduce what is uh, chemical reaction network theory and chemical reaction networks in particular, and then the kinetic systems uh, together with reaction networks uh, constitute the dynamical system. And then uh, I will introduce some preliminaries to our results and chapter five or section five will cover our uh, main results. Okay, so um, to introduce chemical reaction network theory, this is uh, the main concern. So is it possible that knowing only the structure of the network will be sufficient to deduce behavior or behaviors of a system arising from the network that is independent of the rate parameters? So. This is basically the aim of chemical reaction network theory, to analyze the properties of a dynamical system, and in particular, derive conditions which ensure a dynamical behavior independent of the precise values of the reaction constants, which are often poorly known or varying. So for a brief history, so chemical reaction network theory uh, was originated by Rutherford Aries, a chemical engineer, and it focused focuses on what happens to the concentrations of, uh, let us say, chemicals involved as time passes. So since 1972, uh, we have uh, this main results, the deficiency theorems, which I will discuss later, uh, the persistence conjecture, and the global attract attractor conjecture, or the global stability of equilibrium, which until now is a conjecture. So, for the applications of chemical re reaction network theory, I was saying uh, earlier that uh, our department is especially um, interested with mathematical biology being in a campus or university which is uh, whose strength is at, in agriculture and biological sciences. So for the applications of CRN in systems biology in uh, uh, 2001, so Bailey wrote, wrote uh, a review of complex biology without parameters, and CRNP is one of the, he, he said, one of the promising uh, field in systems biology. And then Aguda, uh, in a chemist in 1994 and to 1999, studied the oscillating dynamics of the cell cycle using what is called the stoichiometric network approach. So this is also uh, some sort of CRNP, but uh, in terms of stoichiometric uh, network analysis. And then uh, in 2001, Sontag uh, did this study on T-cell proofreading using CRNT also. And Guna Wardina in 2003, he has these lectures on CRNT for in silico biologies. And between 2005 and 2010, Krashun and Feinberg um, dealt with a theory of injective systems and uh, Krashun and students on identifiability of CRNs. Now our group um, headed by uh, Professor Mendoza studied CRNT or chemical reaction network theory for biochemical systems. So these biochemical systems are processes whose um, kinetics are in terms of power loss in contrast with mass action kinetics. So which is uh, more uh, interested with homogeneous systems, which are well steered, but uh, with biochemical systems, oh, it's more interested with heterogeneous environments. Okay, so we focus on power law kinetic systems. So what exactly is a chemical reaction network? So, uh, well, uh, from our uh, high school chemistry, so we know what a chemical reaction is, and this is a typical chemical reaction network 
a uh, chemical reaction in chemistry uh, when a uh, a chemical uh, interact with an enzyme producing an intermediate complex and then degrading into another uh, complex uh, E1 plus AP. So in terms of, uh, or mathematically, we can express a chemical reaction network in this sense. So we have what we call the set of species, the elements. So in this case, uh, let us call them X1 to X6. So this E1, EA, and so on. And then we designate M to be the cardinality of our set. So in this case, six. And then we take the linear combinations of this species, uh, which appears in our reaction. So we call them complexes. So in this case, as you can see, we have uh, six complexes. So they are involved either as a product or as a reactant of our reaction. So let us call them uh, C1 to C6. And um, uh, well, uh, it's also six in this case. And uh, we can associate um, uh, what we call a matrix of complexes. Uh, this is an M by N matrix where in the, we have the species versus the complexes. And we are just taking the stoichiometric coefficients of the species with respect to the complex. So let us call that Y, that matrix of complexes. So let us now use the Xi's instead of the E1's and the A's. So this is just the same comp uh, reaction network. How about the set of reactions? So the set of reactions R can be taken as a subset of the Cartesian product of uh, C with itself, okay? So in this case, we have six reactions, okay? Also, six reactions also. So with this, we can associate still another matrix called the incidence matrix, and it's an M by R uh, matrix. And the entries are just um, either negative one, one, or zero. Negative one, if the complex uh, say X1 plus X2 is a reactant or a product of the reaction. So in this case, for the first reaction, which is X1 plus X2 producing X3, we can see that X1 plus X2 is the reactant. So we have negative one and then X3 is the product. So we have one. If neither, we just uh, put zero. So we have an incidence matrix we call it I sub A. So we will use them later. So the triple S C R is called the chemical or a chemical reaction network. Okay. So please stop me if uh, something is uh, wrong or uh, you have some questions. All right. So we can view CRNs or chemical reaction networks as directed graphs. So we can study them, the structure. So we can um, uh, study them as directed graphs. So in this case, we have the running example and we can associate uh, some um, uh, properties of the, uh, of the structure. For instance, in graph theory, we have what we call the weak components. So there is a path between one complex to another and we call them the linkage classes. And the number of these linkage classes, we denote it by L. So in this case, we have two linkage classes. Okay, so there is a path from one complex to another. On the other hand, we can also have what we call the strong linkage classes. So we have a path from X1 plus X2 to X3 and vice versa. Okay, so those are the strong components. So in this case, we have four. So this one is one strong linkage class. This, this two, uh, these are called the terminal strong linkage classes. So trivially, they are strong linkage classes. So we can identify four strong linkage classes while we have just two linkage classes. And one important, um, one important kind of a CRN is what we call a weakly reversible chemical reaction network. 
And it happens when SL, the number of strong linkage classes, is just equal to the, link, the number of linkage classes. So if SL is equal to L, then we have weakly reversible network. So in this case, uh, this is different from the original because we have here another reaction. So the, the, the original was uh, there is no uh, reverse reaction for X1 plus X4 to X3. So this one, this uh, reaction, uh, CRN, is not weakly reversible because L is 2 while SL is 4. But if we add another reaction, a reverse reaction for this, then we have a weakly reversible reaction network, chemical reaction network. Okay? So that is for our chemical reaction networks. Now, a dynamical system will not be complete without the kinetics. And so we discuss a chemical kinetic system. So let us go to the running example. So the kinetics or chemical kinetics is an assignment for every reaction. So for every reaction, there is a kinetics associated with that reaction. So for instance, okay, our reaction one, which is X1 combining with X2 producing X3, we can associate a kinetics K1 of X equal to, uh, okay, so this is a rate constant times the product of the uh, species present in the uh, reactant complex. So we have the reactant complex X1 plus X2, so we get the product of that X1, then we raise it to some um, uh, what we call kinetic order. So that's the, aside from the, uh, rate constant K12, so we associate this kinetic, uh, we will call it kinetic vector. Okay, so for each reaction, we will associate some Ki. So for this, we have, of course, uh, K1 to K6, because we have six reactions. Okay, so power law kinetics, um, under power law kinetics, our exponents will be real numbers, okay? So it is defined by an R by M matrix F, which we will call kinetic order matrix, which consists of these exponents. And our vector K is the rate vector. Ito, uh, that is the uh, this coefficients K sub I. So this will constitute our rate vector, while the exponents will constitute our kinetic order matrix. So for our example, running example, so the kinetic order matrix will be given by this F. So for each reaction, we will have the exponents of our species involved in our reactant complex. So we have for the first reaction, so the exponent of X1, F11, exponent of X2, F12, and so on. So for uh, the... Um, uh, second reaction, so the second reaction is X3 producing X1 plus X2. So we have F23 as the uh, exponent of X3. So again, our kinetic orders are real numbers. Okay, so one of the subset of power law kinetics is the mass action kinetics. Uh, we are, I think, familiar with the law of mass action. So the law of mass action states that the rate of chemical reaction is directly proportional to the product of the concentrations of each reactant raised to the power of its stoichiometry. Okay, so in uh, uh, that would mean that the kinetic order matrix consists of the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants, or the exponent will be the stoichiometric coefficients of our reactants. So the same, um, the same uh, running example, like example earlier, so I did not uh, change, but with mock assumption, the F11 will just be the coefficient of X1. Remember, for reaction one, the reactant is X1 plus X2. So the, or the exponent of X1 for our kinetics will be one and also for X2 because those are the stoichiometric coefficients of our uh, in the reactant complex. So that's uh, for the MAC assumption. 
So let us take a look at the classic uh, Lotka Volterra model. So we can um, uh, we can associate a CRN or we can model the classic uh, Lotka Volterra model with a CRN in this uh, CRN. Okay. So X1, let us say, is the prey. X2 is the pred uh, predator. So with X1 eating grass, for instance, so he will become or it will become 2x1. But if the predator uh, eats the prey, so there will be uh, more or 2x2, for instance, and then x2 with natural death, so it goes to zero. So with this uh, CRN or with the MAC for this CRN, with a MAC assumption for this CRN, the first reaction would have kinetics kappa 1 x1 with MAC. So the, the exponent of x1 will just be 1. It's just the coefficient here. The second reaction would have kinetics kappa 2 x1 times x2. Again, the coefficient here are 1. So those are just the exponents of x1, x2 here. And the third reaction would have kinetics kappa 3 x2. Okay. Now, how do we get the dynamical system of a chemical kinetic system or the ODE. So the dynamics of a system uh, can be um, uh, produced using the CRN and the kinetics. And it will be given by this system. So the uh, change in our species concentration will just be equal to our um, uh, matrix of complexes, Y, times the incidence matrix, IA, times the kinetics, no, this composed of the Ki. And this Y times Ia can be represented or can be written as our N. And this N is called the stoichiometric matrix. Now, when you, are have, when you have a dynamical system, one of the obvious uh, uh, problem is to determine the set of positive equilibria of your system. And in this case, we know that to get the positive equilibrium of a dynamical system, you just have to equate this to zero and you get the positive equilibria. But our interest later is what we call the set of complex balance equilibria. And in, that, in this case, uh, we have just Ia, K of X, and equating that to zero. Okay? So this consists of all Xs such that uh, uh, it is in the kernel of Ia. Okay, so that will be our concern later. All right. So again, let us go back to the Lotka Volterra system under mass action kinetics. So we have seen this CRN earlier. We have seen the kinetics also earlier. And if we get the ODE or the dynamical system, then you just have this equation. So this is just the derivatives of x1 and x2 with respect to time. This is just our n or our y times ia multiplied to our k of x. And you will get the Lotka Volterra model that is, uh, of course, uh, popularly uh, known. Okay? All right. Now, let us go to uh, the main results in CRNT, which are also our motivation for our study. So let us recall that n denote the number of complexes. L denotes the number of linkage classes or weak components. Our N is just the product Y times IA or the stoichiometric matrix. And we can define the deficiency of a chemical reaction network. It is just the integer delta, which is just equal to the number of complexes minus the number of linkage classes minus the rank of our stoichiometric matrix. In literature, the uh, uh, Shiner and Feinberg, for instance, um, describe deficiency as the linear or the dependency of the linear interaction of the, of uh, sorry, the linear dependency of the reactions. So uh, they say that the higher the deficiency, the stronger the linear dependency of the reactions. Okay, and as we can see, the deficiency is just dependent on our, um, the structure, the structure of our chemical reaction network. We are not talking of kinetics here, right? 
we are not talking of constants here. We just have the number of complexes, linkage classes, and of course, we can always get the stoichiometric matrix. Okay. And again, recall that E plus denotes the set of positive equilibria and our uh, uh, quickly reversible network would mean that the number of strong linkage classes is just equal to the number of linkage classes. So we need these terms uh, for the deficiency zero theorem, which is the main, one of the main results or the foundational results of uh, CRNT. So this is uh, so powerful that... Uh, it's uh, quite, uh, well, of course, popular in CRN, okay? So it says that if our reaction network has deficiency zero, again, the deficiency is just N minus L minus the rank of N, and the network is not weakly reversible, then for arbitrary kinetics, not necessarily mass action, the differential equations, the ODE, corresponding to the uh, CRN cannot admit a positive steady state. So it cannot have a positive equilibrium and cannot admit a cyclic composition trajectory along which all species concentrations are positive. So we just look at looking no, only in the structure, the deficiency and the weak reversibility of, of the network, we can deduce uh, this behavior of our dynamical system of our ODEs. On the other hand, if the network is weakly reversible, but for mass action kinetics only, but regardless of the positive values of the rate constants, the resulting differential equations will have uh, precisely one steady state in each positive stoichiometric compatibility class. And that steady, steady state or equilibrium is asymptotically stable. And there's no non-trivial cyclic composition trajectory along which all species concentrations are positive. So these results are basically one of the uh, concerns of those working in dynamical systems uh, in the study of the existence or uniqueness of our of the equilibrium if they exist no? okay so this is just one of the theorems it's called deficiency zero theorem uh, by horn and jackson but uh, there is also what is called deficiency one theorem by feinberg so for that, the reaction network is of deficiency one. And so same results, uh, not same, but analogous results were uh, deduced by Feinberg. So now there are many other uh, deficiency theorems, higher deficiency theorems coming out from, from, the, from the theory, from the CRNT. Okay, so let me go to uh, the, the focus of our work. Okay, because much uh, studies or work are devoted to mass action systems. So what uh, we focus on are called the power law kinetic systems, which I have uh, earlier discussed, because of our motivation to study uh, biochemical systems, which are of power law, uh, which has power law kinetic systems, which are power law kinetic systems. Okay, so we define a term called power law reactant determined kinetics. So this is a subset of a power law kinetics. Uh, power law kinetics. So we say that a power law kinetic system has reactant determined kinetics or of type PLRDK if for any two reactions with identical reactant complexes, the, con the corresponding rows, rows of kinetic orders in F are identical, meaning if our uh, chemical reaction network has branching reactions, that is, they have the same reactants. For instance, this one, our running example, uh, X3 is a reactant of this reaction, but X3 is also a reactant of this reaction. So we have a branching uh, uh, reaction coming from X3. So if it is of type PLRDK, this chemical reaction network, then the kinetic order in F, kinetic orders in F, so this must have the same kinetic order. Okay. Also for X6, because there are two uh, reactions having X6 as, as reactant. So this one and this one. Okay. So earlier, 
you have seen the kinetic order matrix. Again, so those are just the exponents of our uh, species involved in our reactant. And so because we have uh, two reactions with identical reactant complexes, if, if this is of type PLRDK, then F23, this one, must be equal to F33. So because X3 is a common reactant of those two reactions, R2 and R3. Similarly, uh, reactions R5 and R6 have the same reactants. And so F5, 6 and F6, 6 must have the same or must be the same. And so again, if the, these are true, then we have a PLRDK kinetics. Okay. Now, uh, previously uh, in my, uh, I think, fourth slide or fifth slide, we know that this is not weakly reversible because the number of linkage classes is two, but the number of strong linkage classes is four. So it's not weakly reversible, but we need that type of chemical reaction network. And uh, luckily, we have a mathematical construct not called network translation, such that if we have this CRN or chemical reaction network together with this F or kinetic order matrix, we will just get the same dynamical system. So the ODE that can be produced from this is just the same as the ODE that can be produced from this one. So you can check, okay? Uh, earlier we discussed how to get our ODE from the chemical reaction network and from the kinetics. Okay, so they will just uh, give the same ODE. So this is called a uh, uh, network translation. So this example and the previous one generate the same set of ODEs. But what is the difference of this chemical reaction network? This one is now weakly reversible. So as you can see, the number of linkage class is just one. And the strong linkage class is just one also because uh, there is a path uh, from one uh, complex to another and vice versa. So you will go back to where you are earlier you know, if you have a weekly or a strong terminal linkage class. So we have L is equal to SL here. So we have a weekly reversible PLRDK system. Okay, so we will need this for uh, illustration later. Okay, so let us, uh, def we defined what we call the T-matrix to study these types of power law kinetic systems, these PLRDK systems. So uh, in a study by Mueller and Regensberger, they introduced the Y tilde matrix. So it is an M by N matrix defined as follows. These are just the kinetic orders, okay? So Y tilde, I, uh, the IJ entry is just the K, K I entry uh, in F if J is a reactant complex of a reaction K and zero otherwise. So we use this definition and we just uh, truncate Y tilde, but how to truncate? We delete the non-reactant columns. Okay, so if, if uh, uh, the, it's not non-reactant, the, the complex, then we uh, truncate it. Okay, we delete it. So it must be an M by NR. NR is the number of reactant complexes, while M, of course, are the species. Okay, so NR are the uh, reactant uh, complexes. So for instance, uh, we uh, look at the previous uh, weakly reversible PLRDK system. So weakly reversible. So let us uh, get the T matrix. Okay. So in this case, all are reactant complexes, as you can see, all are reactant complexes. So we put them here, all of them. And then we have M, the, the species. And then we have the reactant complexes here.
want to, and so on. So we put some values, okay? Uh, real values, okay? So earlier, we just denote it by F11, F12, but now we, we uh, put some values to it. And uh, T hat, we just uh, append L1, okay? So which is just uh, with um, characteristic uh, vector that we put the one if the react if the complex belongs to that linkage class say L1. Uh, in this case, it's a not, not so nice example because we only have one linkage class. And so all of this is a member of that linkage class. And so uh, we put one. Otherwise, if one is outside L1, we put zero for that complex. So it's not a good example to illustrate uh, this L1 here because we just have one linkage class. So we just, we just have T again. Uh, this matrix, M by NR matrix, with uh, just the kinetic orders, um, the entries are kinetic orders. But T hat, we append this uh, row. So uh, uh, corresponding to L1, and we say it's one if the complex belongs to the linkage class, and zero otherwise. Okay, so I just repeat the uh, the slide, but we further define what if our t hat is rank maximal. So if t hat is rank maximal or full rank, then we say it is of type PLTIK. So if its column rank is maximal, so we call it a PLTIK kinetic uh, system. So it's also power law, of course, but uh, uh, it has a um, special property that it's T hat rank maximal. So it's column rank of the T hat is maximal. Okay. And uh, furthermore, we uh, define what a kinetic reactant deficiency is. So uh, in the hope of finding uh, a, a theorem similar to the deficiency zero theorem, we come up with another um, uh, parameter, which, which we will call delta hat. So uh, earlier, we saw uh, the uh, uh, deficiency, which is given by n minus l minus the rank of n. But this time, q hat is the rank of our t hat. And we define our kinetic reactant deficiency as the number of reactant complexes minus the rank of T hat. So that is delta hat. And if deficiency measures the linear dependence of the reactions, kinetic reactant deficiency measures the degree of the kinetic interactions of the PLRDK system. So the higher the kinetic reactant deficiency, the lower the extent of linear independence of the kinetic orders or the kinetic interaction. So it's uh, quite different from the notion of uh, deficiency. So for our running example, the weakly reversible one, uh, Q hat is just, uh, of course, NR is four and Q hat, you can uh, readily check that Q hat is also four. And so Q hat is equal to zero. And we uh, have this proposition that if delta hat is equal to zero, then our system, our chemical reaction network together with the kinetics is a PLTIK system and vice versa. So if it's a PLTIK system, then delta hat will be equal to zero. Okay. So uh, this is one of our uh, preliminary uh, results. Okay, so let us uh, go to the main uh, result, which is all about complex balance equilibria and our zero kinetic reactant deficiency theorem. Uh, it's like the deficiency zero theorem, but in terms of uh, power law kinetics. Okay, so what is this complex balance of equilibrium? So in 1972, Horn and uh, Jackson introduced a subset of 
E plus. Again, E plus is the set of uh, our equilibria. And uh, the set of complex balance equilibria will be denoted as C plus. The definition goes like this. A positive vector C in RM, so it's, uh, it's a species concentration, is called complex balance if K of C is contained in the kernel of IA. Okay, the IA is the incidence matrix. So in symbols, we just have this. So the species concentration, so in RM, so such that uh, IA times K of X is equal to zero. K of X is our kinetics, all right? Graphically, what do you mean when we have a complex balance equilibrium? So if we have a complex balance equilibrium, the net inflow and net outflow across each complex are equal. So if we have a steady state or an equilibrium which is complex balance, so at that uh, species concentration, the net inflow and net outflow across each complex, each complex are equal. Okay? So they are, uh, uh, aside from the uh, results that I will uh, show you later, um, complex balance equilibrium, they are uh, in applications, they are calling this as thermodynamic equilibrium, this complex balance equilibrium. So a kinetic, a kinetic system is called complex balance if it has one, at least one complex balance equilibrium. Okay, so again, all complex balance equilibrium are equilibrium. <laughs> okay, and if you have one complex balance equilibrium, then your kinetic system is complex balance. So what is our goal and motivations in our uh, study? Well, our goal is to show that weakly reversible zero kinetic reactant deficiency PLRDK systems, uh, or in other words, PLTIK systems, because earlier we have seen that PLTIK systems are those systems with zero kinetic reactant deficiency. And these systems have complex balance equilibrium. So what are our motivations? So um, in 1972 also, uh, Horn and Jackson, aside from the uh, deficiency zero theorem, proved that in a complex balance mass action system, there is a unique positive complex balance equilibrium in each uh, stoichiometric compatibility class. And this equilibrium is locally asymptotically stable relative to tra trajectories in this stoichiometric compatibility class. And uh, uh, well, uh, uh, the, when we talk of uh, equilibrium, of course, the next thing is stability. Okay, you will ask about the stability of the system, of the, of the equilibrium. And this uh, result is uh, tempting such that uh, actually the first uh, uh, attempt of Horn and Jackson is to show that the stability is not only local but global. But of course, they retract it because uh, they saw some errors. And until now, this uh, global uh, attractor conjecture is still a conjecture, okay? So um, the stability is, uh, was proven to be locally, but uh, it cannot be until now, there's no proof that the stability can be extended globally, okay? But also another uh, restatement of the deficiency zero theorem, aside from the first that I have shown you, is this one, the less popular one. The less popular one is that a weakly reversible mass action system with deficiency zero admits a complex balance equilibrium. So that is, the system is complex balance. So these are our motivations for our goal. So the deficiency zero theorem of Horn, Jackson, and Feinberg is... Um, um, constrained to mass action system, okay? But we want a general, more general kinetic system, uh, which we call PLRDK systems, power law reactant determined kinetic systems. And we are uh, successful with that uh, using these preliminary results. 
Okay, so we have this uh, preliminary results. If uh, P we have a PLRDK system and such that the kinetic reactant deficiency is zero, then um, the existence of uh, the equilibrium in uh, linkage classes will imply, uh, for each linkage classes, will imply the existence of the equilibrium for the whole network. So this is the first. And the existence of um, a complex balance equilibrium for each linkage class will imply the existence of a complex balance equilibrium for the whole system. And another thing is that uh, the, if, if our system is weakly reversible, then the set of complex balance equilibria of the whole system will just be the intersection of the complex balance equilibria of, uh, as of our subnetwork for each linkage class, for each linkage class Li, okay? And uh, so is uh, the second uh, result, okay? So those are the preliminary results uh, yielding our main result, the zero kinetic reactant deficiency uh, theorem. So suppose we have a PLRDK kinetics with T matrix T and our kinetic reactant deficiency is zero. If our network is weakly reversible, then our set of complex balance equilibria is non-empty and vice versa, okay? So we can also derive or we were able to derive a parameterization of our set of complex balance equilibria and the uniqueness of the uh, complex balance equilibria for each positive kinetic reactant flux class. So it's, uh, you can check our uh, work for, for this. But uh, we were able to derive um, an analogous result with the deficiency zero theorem of uh, Feinberg for uh, the existence of a complex balance equilibrium. So the necessary and sufficient condition is that N must be weakly reversible and our kinetic reactant deficiency is zero. For a more general PLRDK system. So just uh, to show you an application of our work, okay, so our first running example is this one, which is also a model of what we call a one-site phosphorylation system. And we showed earlier that a dynamically equivalent reaction network will be given by this. This is not weakly reversible. This is weakly reversible, but they have we assume that they have uh, the same kinetic order matrix so that it will give the same dynamical system. And uh, I showed you earlier this one, okay, the T matrix. So uh, also uh, we were able to show, uh, okay, obviously that is weakly reversible. Earlier we computed for delta hat, the kinetic reactant deficiency. So by the preceding theorem, our zero uh, kinetic reactant deficiency theorem, our translated system, because this is just a translated system, the original one is not weakly reversible, the translated system has a complex balance equilibrium. So we cannot uh, conclude for the original system, but uh, for the existence of the complex balance equilibrium, but it has a positive equilibrium. Okay? But the translated system has a complex balance equilibrium. Uh, in 2019, uh, COVID is still not present, but as I was re reading this example or application of our result, so it seems uh, this is uh, some sort of uh, COVID infection. So we have, for instance, a typical SIR model, susceptible infected uh, recovered epidemic model with kinetic orders from the set of real numbers. So. The variables represent the number of people in each compartment at a particular time. We can um, model the SIR uh, epidemic by this chemical kinetic system. So our first reaction is uh, given by this. So I will explain what happened with each reaction. Uh, with kinetic order matrix, for instance, uh, this one. So we put um, for R4. So we just have uh, 0 0.1 for, uh, for this S. So we do not assume mass action. We assume PL 
power law. So we have 0 0.1 for, for S. Okay. So let us uh, study the model. So what do you mean by R1? So R1 means the infection flow. So the interaction of the infected and the susceptible will result to uh, more infections. R2 is the recovery. So from infected, so there is uh, the recovery, the recovered individuals. R3 implies temporal immunity. So recovered, but you again became susceptible. And the R4, we included this to be the infection by uh, the environment. So uh, the susceptible did not interact with the, with the infected, unlike R1, but he got, I mean, or some of them, portion of them got infected. So we assume that the infection is by uh, the environment. And we represent it with kinetic order 0 0.1. So. This is significantly, significantly below the kinetic order of R1. I think the kinetic order of R1 uh, is 1. It's, uh, yeah, it's 1. Uh, and we uh, just put 0 0.1. So to mean that by the environment, uh, it's uh, slower, the uh, infection, unlike the interaction of the infected and the susceptible. So this SIR models, with both infection by a contraction of individuals and by uh, environmental factors, but without lasting resistance to the disease, can be seen in some fungal infection outbreak and flu infection outbreak. As I have told you, COVID is not yet there when we uh, give this example. This is a hypothetical example. Okay. And uh, we can check a T hat to get our Q hat. Uh, giving us the reactant uh, kinetic reactant deficiency to be zero, and as we can see, or we can uh, we can prove that n is weakly reversible. Our system is weakly reversible, and so from our main result, we have a complex balance equilibria for this power law epidemic system. Okay, all right. So this is my last slide uh, for the results. So uh, we. Recently, uh, and this is uh, a submitted work, we continue our um, uh, study with those complex balance system where every positive equilibrium is complex balance. So as opposed to a complex balance kinetic system wherein there is only one complex balance equilibria, here, if you have an absolutely complex balance system, then every positive equilibrium is complex balance. So our motivation is, uh, again, uh, uh, some work by Feinberg uh, that says that any deficiency zero complex balance system is actually absolutely complex balance. And uh, F. Horn and Jackson showed that the full converse of the result is not true. Uh, they uh, showed that for mass action system, complex balance mass action system, regardless of their deficiency, they are actually absolutely complex balance. And so in our recent submitted work, we revived the study of uh, uh, absolutely complex balance systems because the literature is limited to these uh, results. So we revived the study of absolutely complex balance systems by providing a partial converse to Feinberg system we identified a weakly reversible power law kinetic system where absolute complex balancing implies zero deficiency. Furthermore, in the spirit of Horn and Jackson's result, we described several methods for constructing new classes of absolutely complex balance systems with positive deficiency and present classes of power law kinetic systems for each method. Because Horn and Jackson's um, result is that Regardless of deficiency, if you have a complex balance mass action system, it's always absolutely complex balance. But our uh, results focuses on new classes, not, not uh, mass action systems. So also, we initiated the study of uh, absolutely complex balance in poly PL systems. So we um, uh, further extend our study to sums of power law 
kinetic systems, not just power law systems, but sums of power law kinetic systems and indicated some initial results. So those are my results and uh, the rest will be uh, references. So muchas gracias. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you, uh, Edita. I think that's nice the talk. last. Uh, am I too fast? <laughs> uh, I think it's okay with me. I don't know about yeah. the others. Si alguien tiene pregunta, duda, comentario. Can I stop sharing or? No, what? no. Uh, please, let, no. Let's wait if a few if, if questions come. Yes, all right. Then. Okay. Edith, I have yeah, a question. Yeah. Yeah, Rajas, uh, please. Thanks for the nice talk. So it's quite interesting. And uh, my, since I'm an outsider, just have some like curiosity questions. Yes, um, yes, yes, please. Yeah, one thing I would like is probably maybe if you have uh, some references or notes to. Uh, this reaction networks, I would like to have a look. I mean, you could yes, recommend. yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I indicated here um, the, the main references. So these are uh, uh, especially uh, this uh, Feinberg's work. I think mm -hmm. wait, it's, it's not, uh, I have so many references, but it's not coming out. So I have several references uh, for, I can send to you if, you are interested actually you i can uh, send this presentation if uh, if needed okay definitely sure. i can uh, share with you some uh, references yeah uh, so uh, my question now thank you very much so yes. the, the other question is so um, this kind of problems seem to be associated as you said in the beginning maybe with some graphs and yes. incidence matrices so what are the mathematical like questions so meaning uh, uh, conjectures if there are open which are associated to these like questions so meaning i don't know if you understand me I mean i just want to know uh, uh, open I, I questions could, yes i mean not the not not, not in the language of chemical reaction network but other like uh, open conjectures in matrix theory or something like that. Ah, which... um, I I think the global attractor conjecture is. Uh, uh, I don't know if uh, it's it's very popular in dynamical systems, but okay. I'm not sure if uh, the same can be in graph theory or in matrix algebra. But definitely. This this uh, field as a mathematical tool really employs uh, several uh, mathematics in linear algebra in graph theory. So because as I have told earlier, the the main concern of chemical reaction network theory is on the structure of the of the network. So uh, it's not we will not be talking of the I mean. I mean, uh, solving the ODEs you know, because, uh, I mean, those are polynomial uh, equations, right? So mm -hmm. it's quite hard to uh, to get the solutions of those uh, if you have big networks. So that's the problem. You now we have networks, uh, for instance, composed of uh, 50 or more complexes. So it's very hard if you will solve the dynamical system and find the equilibrium in the usual sense. And this is offering new, um, I mean, mathematical tool to uh, discover properties without going into those uh, details. And as you can see, we don't talk of any rate uh, parameters, right? We are not mm -hmm. concerned of uh, the rate, the rate vectors or the rate constants, but looking okay. only into the structure. And so you are right. Uh, matrix algebra and uh, graph theory. Uh, actually, um, there 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 are a group in Europe uh, working on algebraic geometry mm -hmm. uh, related to this uh, work. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yeah, Edita, I, uh, ¿alguien más quiere preguntar Thank you, algo? Edita. Hello. Uh, ¿Alguien más quiere preguntar algo? ¿Comentar algo? Uh, si no, ah, yeah, Edita, so I was saying that uh, these things, uh, maybe not in our, uh, as Rajas was saying, that we don't see these things every now and then. Oh, okay. yes. but, 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 but for your information, uh, I know that in Brazil, they do a lot of this dynamical system. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, and also, uh, I have a strong feeling that this discussion can be adopted for the for the finance economics mm, really <laughs> yes 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 because uh, i had a course uh, in during my during my masters on finance and i saw mm. such things there so maybe uh, you can you can explore this some uh, for the applications yes, i have yes. a, actually the the main applications that we are working on are biology really biology yes yes, yes. as you because said the network you're doing yeah, it's, uh, yeah, you said your quite... focus, yeah, as you said, your department is focused on this. I, yeah. I agree. But uh, I am saying there is an aspect which you can explore with some collaborator. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, nice to know. I, I am not, I have no idea, actually, that it can be uh. applied or in, in, in economics. Mm -hmm. And also big data thing will come to you, as you indicated, that matrix theory and things uh, uh -huh. will be applicable. So big data issue will also come. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. It was really a nice talk. So, <laughs> and I uh, beg my pardon to uh, hurry you up, to rush you up for the. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Okay. So, so sorry let's for talk the, here. Um, let's let's talk here, and uh, you will be getting the notification for the further talks as you are added into the group, right? All right. So if okay. you want, you can attend it. And anyway, I will be putting all the all the talks on the channel which I indicated to you. Yeah, I saw 